Hello and welcome to another Lost Ark video. My name is Lost in the World and today we're going to be discussing the, I don't know, controversy? Is there controversy? We're here to discuss the uh, issues around the Argos release, the timing of the release and how it's left um, some of the community feeling. What my thoughts are on that, um, I don't think my thoughts are going to be very popular on it, but I, I, I don't want to lie, so I'm just going to be really honest. So without further ado, let's get into what the controversy is, and is it really even a controversy? Okay, so this is the post on the screen by a gentleman called Chris Matrix, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, and it's about the issues that he feels have gotten out of hand in Lost Ark. I'm going to read the post here, uh, it's going to open the screen as well, and I'm going to break down why I agree with some of this, but why I actually disagree with some of it as well. So I'm writing this topic today to hopefully address a couple of issues that not only concern me, but are actually giving me considerable reason to quit playing until they are fixed. To provide some context, I am a light spender, less than $100 spent outside of the Gold Founders Pack, and have approximately 400 hours played since the Western release. I'm currently sitting at 1355 item level on my main and have several alts nearing T3 as well. Here is what I am seeing. People that just dump money into the game, what we call swiping, with maybe a third of the time played that I do, some even less, who have passed me in progression. These players are able to enjoy the end game content you both claim you are trying to push the player base to because your own conferences have stated that the point of Abyssal and Legion raids is where you see your highest player retention rate. Meanwhile, those who actually put in time and effort to reach these goals can't even get the materials and have the owning rates to get to your goal of retention. And have the I think that's a mistype, but anyway. This brings up the current owning rates in order to reach this goal. At current, the rates are abysmal with the amount of resources we have available to us every day struck weak. Even with the Grand Prix event, this is not making up for the fact that the Western release has a severely low amount of resources available to the player compared to the average rate of success. For example, I completed all of my daily actions available to me that provide resources for owning and I was able to attempt an upgrade three times. How many times did I succeed? Zero. Moving on a little bit on this post, you just touch upon the different versions of the game, but they're really the key points that I wanted to read out there regarding what he was saying in the post. And it's, it's developed a lot of chatter. And I, you know, there's big chunks in there I, I agree with. Um, let's, let's talk about the two main issues. And I think really it's two obvious issues in the game at the moment. So what are the issues? Well, first of all is that people feel left behind, left out, or forced to spend money to play Argos or Day. We're not just forced to do that to access any of the new content. And secondly, the gear owning rates have led to people just feeling that their time is wasted. The balance people feel just isn't right between the rate of failure versus the rate of mats received. Now, funnily enough, the answer to a lot of this will actually and can be solved and will be solved by the content that's in the video running behind me right now. I'll go more into that in a minute, but let's break down the first part that people feel left behind, left out or forced to spend money. Now this was said a lot in the run-up to Lost Ark's release, but take the game at your own pace. It seems that nobody's really listened to that and they all feel very, very angry that they cannot do Argos on day one. Now, MMOs generally speaking, they reward people who invest the most time. I think we can all agree that's just generally what MMOs are like. So regardless of when Argos was released, a lot of people would have missed out. There is no perfect release date that is great for everyone when it comes to content. Too many games nowadays, they release with no content or they have huge content droughts where people leave the game or just never play or come back or whatever and it lasts months. Now what may be the right date for you would be a bad day for somebody else. We have a lot of content to catch up on on the Korean version. The director did say pre-release that he wants to get that content out quickly. Now they did announce that Argos Raid was coming out a month after release and they announced that I think a couple of weeks before release. So it's something they'd kind of um, kind of signposted early and I feel like they didn't want to go back on that I think that was just a design decision they made like a director decision to release that so people have something to firstly aim towards and secondly if people get to it they can show off the content and I will have a video coming out on the Argos raid I completed it yesterday it is fantastic and it's a brilliant aspirational goal for players who are currently playing the game and are not quite ready for it following the release of Argos the roadmap was delayed now I think there's a very clear reason why the roadmap was delayed that's because looking at the data they will have seen that wait a second nobody's ready for the next bunch of content because nobody's ready for this current bunch of content um, and that's the correct um, kind of conclusion to come to. I'm going to quickly show you my guild. Now, my guild is 34 members. It's capped out of the current level. Um, but if this is such a, um, if this is just a snapshot 
of the Lost Stack player base, it'll really show you how basically nobody was ready for Argos. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is my guild at the moment. Let's go off item level. The top two people are me, that's my uh, artillerist main and my gun lancer alt. Going down here, it's clear from this that not a single person in my guild would have been ready for Argos, clearly. But this person wouldn't have nowhere been close at the current gear running rates. And this is a snapshot of my guild. Now, do I think they should have delayed Argos? Yeah, I mean, I said many times on stream, I thought Argos would be pushed to the last few days of March due to the server issues and a few other things. But clearly, when a release date of one month post-release was announced, they wanted to stick to it. I don't think they were going to delay it more than a few weeks. And let's be totally honest, even if they had delayed it a few weeks, how many people that were currently, I don't know, 13, 30, 13, 40, would have made it to 13, 70? Trust me, not a lot. I've got a video here about how brutal the owning rates are in that kind of zone between 1345 and 1370 and nobody's making that free to play they're just not and people not making that it's completely fine because guess what people have lives people have kids people have wives boyfriends girlfriends whatever uh, they've got jobs they've got other hobbies they've got parents you know not everyone is gonna be ready for argos when it's released not even the majority of player base, a significant majority of player boss will not be ready for Argos. Whenever it was released, whether it was March the 8th or whenever it was released, or it was released at the end of the month, I think we can all agree that if a company announces a release date for a month after release, then weren't gonna delay it more than a month and a half, surely. Especially when it's ready and good to go as well. I hear a lot of things about, was the release date done to bait people into spending money? Well, firstly, it was announced a long time ago, so it wasn't like a bait and switch where they just suddenly dropped it on us and like, oh yeah, you know, a phone will make people spend money. You would have known in the run-up that Argos was coming out, so everybody knew it was coming out very, very soon. But when it came out and when it was released, did you feel a need to spend money because you desperately wanted to do it? If you did, honestly, with them announcing Argos so early, that isn't on Smilegate or Amazon. That's on you as an individual player. And if you didn't spend money and you're kind of talking for those who did spend money, then why are you speaking for other people and how they spend their money? I don't get it myself personally. If you work, if you earn your own wage, earn your own money, whatever, you have a right to spend it however you wish. However, is it free to play friendly? No, it's not. But we're gonna touch on that in a minute and why it's, it's okay for some people, most people to not have access to Argos day one. We'll touch on that in a second. As that nicely brings us on to Matt Sources versus Gear Owning Rates. Just to clarify my previous position here, it is possible if you played a significant amount of the game to get to about 1340-ish free to play. However, I find it hard to believe a free to play player could have gotten through that gear owning process up to 1370 for day one. I personally don't see why that matters in a free to play game. This game is free, has no sub, no box cost and people are complaining they can't get access to the raid on day one without spending a penny. I just think that's a little bit skewed, but again, that's not a popular opinion. And also, when would you as a free to play player like Argos to have come out? Those who are unhappy about this, because like, trust me, whatever date you say, the next free to play player has a different date. Now on the other side, Smilegate and Amazon Game Studios have already reacted by delaying the roadmap to amend it based on player progression data. And I do believe they will introduce more events like the Grand Prix that offer fun mini events for free to play players to catch up on mats. In all this conversation, really nobody has talked too much about the Grand Prix event and just how absolutely massive it is in terms of mats. And honestly, I think if someone higher up had just made a slight tweak to the release schedule of the content from the Grand Prix and Argos, I think this conversation would just not be happening. Let me just show you what you get from the Grand Prix and exactly what Smilegate or Amazon Game Studios could have done to avoid this whole mini controversy. This is the Grand Prix shop where you can see I've bought a lot of my stuff because I've been racing and winning, obviously. And you can get these coins from uh, Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, as well as the Grand Prix event. The Grand Prix event runs every two hours. It's very easy to max out this shop within couple of days uh, i mean i've done a one race a day i think three days and i've basically got everything i mean i didn't get the tier two mats but i did get the tier three mats and i got a bunch of stuff from here i mean you know it's very very generous now, i want to point out a few things to you first of all blue engraving books and purple engraving books now as soon as you get plus nine on your nodes for your engravings you are a big step towards having a really solid build and they've given you that basically for free here 
which is insane. Now look at this. Uh, nine, I believe, how many, what do you get here? Is it 14? So you get four, but the event runs for four weeks. So that's 16 grudge books. How much is 16 grudge books worth? Now, I know you can't trade these books, but just talk to you about in terms of how much money it's saving you. Let's have a look at the value of 16 grudge, purple grudge books. 399 so 400 times 16 oh what's the maths on that what's the maths on that i mean that's almost 7,000 golds worth of engraving books that they're just giving to you on top of that all the others of the blue books the class engravings you get the purple class engravings get so so much now here's the thing what i'm saying about this event if smilegate and amazon game studios have just thought about this for a second what they should have done is Delayed Argos till March the 28th, just I'm picking a day at the end of March. And they should have released this event a week earlier, the Grand Prix event. So this should have come before Argos, in the week running up to Argos. People would see how many mats there were that you could get for free. And then Argos would be announced saying, you know, it's coming out in 10 days time. People would be like, right, we need to smash out this racing event. Let's get all these mats. I think the, the blow would be softened. People would see what the Grand Prix event provides and what the mini events in this game provide on top of that let's just sweeten the deal they then announce another mini event in the beginning of april brilliant problem solved no issues i don't think anybody would be complaining sadly they didn't do that <laughs> they did it the other way around but there you go now there is a ton of content from tier 3 that rewards mats that isn't out yet and yeah they need to fill up that gap that hole of materials with events Without a doubt, that needs to happen. They need to announce another event pretty quickly with a ton of mats in it like this one, and they need to let people catch up. Ultimately, though, I've got to be honest, the majority of people are nowhere near Argos, so I don't get the complaining. It feels like complaining for complaining's sake, and I feel like the whole pay-to-win thing is just so played out at the moment. All you hear people is almost, you know, moaning and whinging about it, and look... The game is free to play if you want it to be. You don't have to spend a penny. The game is fantastic. Do you know how good the first raid in this game is the Argos Raiders? It is fantastic. It is a brilliant piece of content. It's it's so it's so skill heavy. It's so uh, on a you know on an individual level. It's so execution based. It's it's excellent. And all you got people is complaining that they couldn't do it on day one when they're at one thousand gear score. I, I don't I don't understand it. That's just my that's just my take on it. Um, I do feel like a large part is complaining for the sake of complaining. Look, people, if you've got a ridiculous amount of money, doesn't matter what content's in the game, you're gonna spend it regardless. Like, to some people, money doesn't matter. To everyone else, you're gonna get to Argos and you're gonna run it. And by the time you get there, you're gonna be running other stuff. And there's gonna be a ton of catch-up events. And what you can do is you can laugh at people in a few weeks' time or a few months time and say I didn't spend a penny yet I've got all these mats and I'm very happy with where I am because actually what Smilegate have done is given you a ton of free mats, a ton of free engraving books which other people have spent thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of gold on which you've been given for free by Smilegate and that's your reward for being a free to play player. Again I totally agree the balance of material sources versus gear owning failure rate or success rate is completely skewed and wrong right now and it needs addressing quickly i was surprised very surprised there was no gear owning rate changes in the patch uh, my stream reaction was live when i read the patch notes i was pretty shocked um and ultimately it's turned out to be a small misstep by them can it be corrected very easily i'm pretty certain a gear owning change is a very minor patch to put into the game and it fix a lot of the issues and i think it'd be coming sooner rather than later and look, finally, on the state of uh, free-to-play players um, not being happy, look, there's no such thing as a free-to-play game. I said this when I played Genshin Impact. Free-to-play games and the term free-to-play, I mean, quite frankly, the term free-to-play just needs binning off. It's just, and he's throwing in the bin, all these games will find a way to extract either money out of you or an ungod ungodly amount of time out of you. And time is money, so it's all the same thing. And that's really all I have to say on that. Yes, it could be fairer. Yes, the gear running rates could be better. But the issue isn't people spending money. The issue is that there is not enough mats in the game. There's not enough mini events like the Grand Prix, which is fantastic for mats. And the gear running rates are abysmal. Now, there needs to be a balance. Right now, you have gear running rates are shockingly bad. The material sources are low. What they need to do is bring the gearing owning rate 
the gear earning rate, sorry, down a bit. I need to bring up the material sources and balance it out. That's it. It's as simple as that. It's got nothing to do with money. It's got nothing to do with people getting access to Argos day one. Guarantee you, 99% of the people who are whinging about that are nowhere near being able to get to Argos. Thank you. Popular opinion for the day. Done. My throat's sore from screaming at my microphone. Thank you. Good night.